In the modern Irish landscape, Ferns is a run-of-the-mill provincial town on a regional road between the larger towns of Enniscorthy and Gorey. But if you pause, slow down and observe this quiet spot, you start to get a sense of the treasures that lie beneath. It's like a rose garden. You love to show people, you love to get the perfume. I love to show people around ferns and let them get the taste of it. This was the seat of kings and saints, the powerhouse of the Kingdom of Leinster, and it was from here that one king, Dermot McMurrah, emerged and was to radically alter the story of Ireland. Many people think he was a man ahead of his time, that he could see the bigger picture, that he was, um, you know, really part of a European um, model. I would always argue K Dermot's case, uh, he, he was... He was maligned, he was cruel, he was cruel, yes he was cruel, but they were all cruel. He may have burned down the village at one point to stop his enemies getting their hands on what was his once upon a time, but he atoned by funding the building of the abbey behind us, so a man of two sides. Saint or traitor? Dermid's story is one that still divides opinion, but answers lie in this ancient town and the Irish Archaeological Field School will begin investigating this story in 2020. We're looking for evidence of Aidan's Monastery and that 12th century Mary's Abbey behind us is um, built over where we think Aidan's Monastery is as it's been recorded by Geophysics, the Discovery Programme and the Ferns Heritage Group did. So we're going to start with two, hopefully two discrete cuttings out in that field with the kind permission of the landowner Patrick Cousins. This is a very vibrant community, they're very interested, there's a small village, uh, only a thousand population or so, but um, very active uh, heritage groups that have had uh, great interest in the town and, and uh, lots and lots of research going on here. Catherine McPartland is the chair of the Ferns Heritage Project. We have a passion here for our history, we love talking about it and sharing, and particularly for people who are interested in exploring with us. The understanding and extent of ancient ferns is a rapidly changing picture. Catherine McLaughlin of Stafford McLaughlin Archaeology is working here on a commercial site and is keenly aware of what archaeologists can offer us. So we take our cue from archaeological information and what the archaeology of the sites can tell us about why people might have been here and at what time they were here, how long their settlements lasted and, and, and how that process works that we see in the ground and from here in Ferns what we can see is we have an ecclesiastical site, the information that we have we would think that the ditch is dating somewhere between the 7th and 9th centuries. Meanwhile at the other end of the village Bernice Kelly from Transport Infrastructure Ireland is working with Kate Taylor, director of TVAS Ireland in the environs of St Mary's Abbey where the IAFS field school will begin their investigations just got such huge potential. There has been so much academic research into ferns, into the ecclesiastical development, the political development of this village, and we have no answers. This is the first time we're turning the sod in this greenfield area behind the cathedral. We're within the monastic uh, enclosure of St. Aidan's Cathedral. This is hugely exciting and I'm actually really jealous <laughs> of these people getting to spend a lot of time. They can do it very carefully, whereas we're, we're in and out. We're in and out. Yeah. Quite often we're just in a field, you know, someone's building a supermarket in a field and we go there and there is no archaeology. But here we've come to Ferns and we know there's going to be something. So it, it's a little bit more interesting and a little bit more frightening as well, because we're guaranteed to find something. Some of Kate's team are new to commercial archaeology, but have already built up an understanding of how to navigate local Irish towns. Get as much of the kind of cultural background to the area as possible and um, get talking with the locals and just kind of become part of the project. Dermot McMurray, The Facts. He was born in Ferns but lost his kingdom of Leinster and to take it back he enlisted the Normans, a foreign force of mounted knights and deadly archers, a force that had swept all before it in Europe and Britain and was now invited to help Dermot retake his kingdom. This Norman invasion was characterised by the High King of the day as an arrogant trespass and it began here in Ferns, Wexford. Wexford is always synonymous with the Vikings and yet it's the start of the Anglo-Norman invasion, it's the start of everything that happened, of that relationship we've had with uh, Britain for 850 years or so. The opportunity to study in Ferns is a unique one. Then we have the whole early monastic site, Aidan's Monastery, sort of coming from the 6th, 7th century onwards. We have high crosses, we have Viking raids, and then probably what it's most synonymous with, but it certainly isn't the only layer of history here, is the Anglo-Normans. So it was Dermot McMurray's seat, 
okay? So it was a capital seat. Um, it was the head of a diocese. We have a cathedral in Ferns. We have a fine 13th century castle, Marshall Castle. And um, we have the 12th century Mary's Abbey behind us. So there's so many different layers. It's well beyond this one video, but it's, it's important for lots of reasons. Fantastic place. Come to Ferns. Get down and dirty and see what you will discover and what places will call out to you. <laughs> What's your favourite place? That one, that definitely. One. I think the old graveyard mm. beside the, the, the cathedral because you can view all the sites from it. Mm. Mary's Abbey. I, I think it's because it, it is a 12th century church 12th and 12th century form but the round belfry, it just always reminds me of a round tower so I think it perfectly mirrors. You have the early monastery, you have the later Anglo-Normans and a one monument you know, you have it just expressed in, in, in one piece of architecture. Oh, I'm standing at it. Actually, it's just around the corner. It's just there. Just at McMurray's grave. I love the vista you get, the sense, and when, on a sunnier day, uh, blue skies here overlooking this landscape, and you know all the things that happened here, and you're standing at McMurray's grave, it's, uh, uh, that's my favourite spot.